يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful All praise is for Allah we praise Him and we seek and ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and, the, and our evil actions. Whomever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide Him. And whoever is misguided, there is none who can guide Him except Allah. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah alone without partners. And I, bear, and I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is His Prophet messenger and servant. All thanks and gratitude belong to Allah, the Lord of all mankind. I ask Allah to bless and bestow peace on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sahabas, the messengers, and all who follow in their path. So, while the plan originally was to continue on the series of the fitnas of our nafs, meaning the trials that we have inside of our own, our own souls, uh, such as humility, ego, greed, so forth, uh, so on and so forth. I attended a khutbah last week, and the topic that the khatib was talking about inspired me to, inshallah, give a, talk about a similar topic. And the khatib, he spoke about something very simple, but it's something that we don't often implement actively in our lives. We don't do it as an intention, we don't do it the right way. And this concept is something that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they understood. And they tried their best to implement it. And the concept is a community. It's a community. We are the Muslim Ummah. Which means we are a community. And as Muslims, we are instructed to enjoin each other in doing good and advise each other against doing bad. There is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ narrated by Abu Bardah that his father said, the Prophet ﷺ said, sent Mu'ad and Abu Musa to Yemen, telling them, so he's sending a convoy to Yemen because they're going to go, they're going to give da'wah over there. And the Prophet ﷺ is advising them, how can you make this the best for you, the best so people will love you, the best, the best so that people will listen to your message, and the best so that people when they join in this message, when they accept Islam, they will become the best of believers. So the Prophet he's sending them to Yemen and he tells them, he tells them, treat the people with ease and don't be hard on them. Give them glad tidings and don't fill them with aversion and love each other and don't differ. So the Prophet he's giving them a very simple advice. When you go and you're going to give da'wah, specific to their situation, when you're going, you're going to give da'wah, make sure that you're kind. When you're greeting a new person, when you're greeting a community, make sure that you show them love. Make sure that you give them glad tidings. Don't go there and say, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, or so on and so forth. Go with love. Show them the right way. When looking to establish a community, when looking to have a working community, when looking to work together in a true brotherhood, the Prophet ﷺ, he advises his companions to give the community glad tidings. So when something good happens to someone in our community, we should enjoin each other in congratulating them, in celebrating in that goodness. But subhanAllah, what do we find nowadays? We find that when good happens to someone, whether it's they got a car, they got a house, they got a new job, they got accepted into the school of their dreams, or Allah blesses them with a child. We find that inside of ourselves, may Allah protect us, we say, okay, when is it my turn? We skip the part about congratulating them. 
We skip the part where we say, congrats, may Allah make it good for you, may Allah put barakah in it. We just say, oh, when is it my turn? Or when is it going to happen to me? They have just received a blessing from Allah and we've just started to, thought of, we've just started to think about ourselves. We don't think to congratulate the other person or celebrate with them. We become jealous. And this is a destructive quality, brothers and sisters. It's destructive to our own selves and to our communities. SubhanAllah, the Khatib, he was telling a story. He said when he was studying uh, in a different country, he said someone in his community had gotten a new car. And the next day, the car was covered in red streaks. So he was, he's looking at it, he's like, why is the car covered in red streaks? It makes no sense. It looks like, you know, a little dirty, looks disgusting. So he asked his roommate, he said, you know, why are they covering the car in these red streaks and something happened? And his roommate, who was a local to that area, he says, when someone gets something new, when someone gets something good, may Allah protect us, this is not an advice, don't do this, or other than that. They slaughter an animal, and they take the blood of that animal and they rub it on the car. So that when people look at it, they don't think of it as a new thing. They see it and they won't think badly. So think about how fearful they are of how their community is going to react of a blessing from Allah. It's a good thing, a new car. It's a blessing from Allah. They're so fearful of how their community is going to react that they're doing this disgusting thing on it. You know? So they go through all of these efforts just because they're worried that if they have something that's good, if they have something that's new, they worry about how the people are going to react. And subhanAllah, we live in a society that enforces this comparison culture. It enforces this, oh, he got it, so it's supposed to be my turn. Or if something has something, someone has something, I have to have something also. Either we do it internally, or we, we hear about this, this culture being instilled in us from you know, external sources. You know, SubhanAllah, I know many of us are from a little East, uh, a little South Asian countries. I can only speak for the South Asians because I don't want to speak for the other ones. I don't have any qualifications there. But we often experience when growing up where it's like, oh, you got this grade, but so-and-so got that grade. Or you got accepted into this school, but so-and-so got accepted into that school. We hear this in our communities. And subhanAllah, there's conversations that take place where it's like, oh, your son got into med school. Don't worry, my son's on his way too. We skip the part about congratulating. Oh, your child is getting married. My child is looking too. Oh, you know, your so-and-so got this good grade or so-and-so got this award. My, my kid's working on it too. We skip the part about congratulating them. We, we skip the part about enjoying them in good. We skip the part about giving them glad tidings about the blessing that they received from Allah. And we immediately just turn it back to when is it going to be mine? A beautiful example that we can take is from a story of the Prophet Wasallam. It's Umar and Abu Bakr sitting with him. They're in the masjid and Ibn Mas'ud is standing a little ways away and he's praying. So the Prophet وسلم, he enters the masjid with Umar and Abu Bakr and he saw Abdullah ibn Mas'ud praying and reciting from Surah Nisa. And while he was reciting, the Prophet وسلم, he praised his recitation. And after he finished reciting a certain number of ayat, he went into ruku and then he went into sajda. And the Prophet وسلم, he saw that he's in the most devout position in sajda. So the Prophet وسلم, he looks at Ibn Mas'ud and he says, ask and you will be given. Ask and you will be given. And the dua of the Prophet وسلم, it goes straight to Allah. So he's saying to Ibn Mas'ud that he's not saying it directly to him, but he's saying about him to ask and you will be given. So Abu Bakr and Umar, they're standing with the Prophet وسلم, and Umar وسلم, he starts to think to himself, he says, I want to give, I want to give Ibn Mas'ud the good news. That his, whatever he was making dua for, it was accepted. I want to give him the good news. So Umar وسلم, he hurries at night to go to Ibn Mas'ud and give these glad tidings. And when he comes to Ibn Mas'ud's home, Ibn Mas'ud sees him and he's, he's asking, you know, why have you come? It's a little weird part of the night. People don't usually visit during this time. Why did you come during this time? And Umar he replied, he says, I wanted to bring you, or I bring you glad tidings of what the Messenger of Allah said about you. So think about that. His first reaction 
was not, oh, Prophet he can make dua for me too, because I'm going to pray in a second. He said, I want to go and I want to give Ibn Mas'ud the good news, the glad tidings. So he goes to his house at a random time at night and he says, I want to give you the glad tidings. But subhanAllah, look at this. Look at the companions of the Prophet them. Ibn Mas'ud, he replies and he says, Abu Bakr has already preceded you. He says, Abu Bakr has already preceded you. Abu Bakr already came and he already gave me the good news. SubhanAllah. May Allah be pleased with him. And Umar radiallahu he replies and he says, if he really did, if he came before me, then he usually does precede us in everything that is good. Take that as an example, brothers and sisters. When they heard that someone was getting a good news, when they heard that the, the Prophet ﷺ was making dua for someone, they raced to go and give him the glad tidings first. They raced to go and congratulate him. They raced to go and celebrate with him. That this is a ni'mah from Allah. That you're going to get something good, let's enjoy in it, let's celebrate in it. That it's good for you, so I want it to be good for me too. When you get something, I'm happy that you got something. It doesn't matter when it's my turn. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will give to some people and He will restrict for some people. Allah knows best. And He will take from, or He will restrict from some people and He will give to others because it's good for them. It doesn't mean that it's not your turn yet. It doesn't mean that it's never going to happen to you. Allah knows best. But when something good happens to someone in your community, when someone gets a new job, new car, new house, whatever it is, rush to celebrate with them. Rush to enjoy in that goodness. Rush to make sure that they feel like this is a true blessing of Allah. SubhanAllah, what happens sometimes is someone, they get a good thing. And then they go and they want to share the news because they feel happy about it, they want to share it. And then someone will say like an off comment, like, oh, that color is weird on your car. Or, oh, you got this spec, you got the lower spec. You know, we immediately have to, you know, as they say, chop their leg off, it's a saying, but chop their leg off in their happiness. That they can't even, they had happiness for a second and now you've already backtracked them. But what we should do is we should recognize that, hey, they got a blessing from Allah. A blessing of Allah came in my community. It's my responsibility to go and make sure that this person feels like it's a true blessing from Allah. That may Allah make this good for you. If it's a car, may Allah make it, you know, uh, May Allah protect it. May Allah make it a source of barakah for you. And so on and so forth. Or if someone's child gets into medical school, may Allah make it easy for them. May Allah make their studies easy. If someone, if someone had a child, may Allah make them the coolness of their eyes. Make dua for them. Immediately go and celebrate with them. Go and enjoy in that good. Another beautiful example, brothers and sisters. We see in the life of the companions in the story of Ka'b ibn Malik. Now, a little bit of backstory for this story is Ka'b ibn Malik. He was the first person, or he was one of the first people to always go. He never missed a war with the Prophet But during the Battle of Tabuk, when the Prophet he told his companions that we're going to leave around this specific time, make sure to prepare yourselves. He had a number of commitments, and he said to himself that I, can, I know I can get rid quickly, so then I'll wait. And then when they're leaving, I'll just quickly get ready and I'll leave with them. So because of his, he, he wasn't an excuse, but he had some commitments that he didn't want to let go of. And the day of the battle, he wakes up and he finds that the, the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they've already left before morning. So then he starts to get despaired. He starts to think, oh man, I missed it. I missed the war. And the Prophet ﷺ, after the war, he comes back and all of the hypocrites, he, they come to the Prophet ﷺ and one by one they're giving him excuses. Oh, I had a kid, I was sick, I'm too old, whatever there is. And the Prophet ﷺ, to all of them, he just said, okay, that's fine. He knew that they're hypocrites, not not Kabbalah uh, Malik, but the other people, the actual hypocrites. He, he knew that they were hypocrites, so he didn't care about their excuse. He said, okay, you're going to do whatever you're going to do, we'll say whatever. And then Ka'b ibn Malik, all of the hypocrites were advising him. You know, he was a poet, so they're like, you're a poet. You can come up with something, you can make some story, and the Prophet says, he'll believe you. So he's saying, no, I can't do that. He's saying, I can't make an excuse. So Ka'b ibn Malik, he goes to the Prophet and he says, he, he greets the Prophet and the Prophet, he, was, he greets him back, but he has like a smile of an angry person on his face. So he's, he tells the Prophet, he just tells him the truth. He says, I have no excuses, I missed the war. So the Prophet, he tells him, that for some time, we're going to have to 
uh, boycott you, you're going to be a little separate from the community because I'm going to wait for Allah's command on this. Because you're not making an excuse, you didn't miss it on purpose, but you still missed the war. So, Ka'b ibn Malik narrates this, he says, for 50 nights, nobody spoke to me. For 50 nights, nobody spoke to me. And every single day, he was making dua, he was crying, and he was asking for forgiveness from Allah. Every single day. And he says, when I had offered Fajr prayer on the 50th morning, on the roof of one of our houses, and I was sitting in a certain condition that Allah had described in the Qur'an, and his own soul felt very strange to him, and even the earth felt narrow to him. That he was so uh, you know, hurt by his actions, he was so regretful, that the earth felt small to him. And he says that, I heard the voice of one who had, invented, who had ascended a mountain, and he's calling with his loudest voice. Think about this, 50 nights that no one has spoken to you. 50 nights that he's making, to du he's making dua to Allah for forgiveness. 50 nights where he's regretting his decision. decision. And he says that someone ascends a mountain, and I, he says in the loudest voice, he says, O Ka'b oh, oh Ka ibn Malik, be happy, receive good tidings. And he says, I immediately fell down in prostration to Allah, realizing that relief had come. And it was told to him that the Prophet ﷺ had announced the acceptance. There was him and a few other people who were in a similar situation of our repentance by Allah when after he had offered the Fajr prayer. And the people, look at how the community responds. The people went out to congratulate us. Some of them went to his other two companions who were in a similar situation. And a horseman came to me in haste. And a man of Banu Aslam came to me running. And all of them are congratulating him. All of them are giving him the glad tidings of acceptance of his repentance. And they all came to him conveying the good, the good tidings. So he says that I quickly changed. And I rushed to the Prophet Subhanallah, he said that at that time he owned no other garments, so he actually borrowed new garments from someone else, and he rushes to the Prophet And while he's going there, the people are receiving him in batches, they're giving him good news, they're congratulating him on Allah's acceptance of his repentance. And they're saying to him, we congratulate you on Allah's acceptance of your repentance. And Ka'b ibn Malik, he further narrates, when I entered the mosque, I saw the Prophet ﷺ sitting with the people around him. And Talha ibn Ubaidullah, he swiftly came to me and he shook hands with me and he congratulated me. And he says, by Allah, none of the muhajireen, meaning the immigrants, got up for me except for Talha. And I will never forget that from Talha. Think about how it's a blessing from Allah that his, acceptance, his repentance has been accepted. And his community rushes to congratulate him. His community rushes to make sure that he feels like it's good news. And he did not forget who it was. And it's narrated by the Prophet The Prophet said, Look at those who are beneath you. This is to understand our favors and understand the blessings from Allah so that we can be more grateful in them. The Prophet ﷺ said, look at those who are beneath you and do not look at those who are above you. For is for it is more suitable that you should not consider as less of a blessing of Allah. So look at those who have less than you and feel grateful. Don't look at the people who have you know the million billion dollar houses. They are also receiving it from Allah. It's also a blessing from Allah. But so that we feel grateful. Look at the people who have less than you. And whenever anyone receives something good, whenever anyone receives a barakah from Allah, rush to congratulate them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah number 103, He says about the, the Muslims, He tells them, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَاَقْتَصِمُوا بِهَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا هُفَرَةٍ مِنَ 
النار فانت فانقذ فانقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers and hold firmly to the rope of Allah together. Hold firmly to the rope of Allah together and do not become divided. Remember the favor of Allah upon you. When you were enemies and He brought you and your hearts to when He brought your hearts together and you became by His favor, brothers, and you were on the edge of the pit of the fire and He saved you from it. Thus Allah does make it clear to you His verses that you have you may be guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers, remember the favors of Allah upon you. Remember how you used to be enemies and He made you brothers through Islam. And as this brotherhood, remember that when someone receives a favor from Allah, it's our responsibilities as brothers and sisters of the Ummah that we should go and we should celebrate and we should enjoin in the goodness that they receive from Allah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that a believer to another believer is like a building whose different parts enforce each other and then the Prophet clasped his hands with fingers interlaced while saying that like this so he's giving an example to the believers that you're like this. You're a building for each other. Each part unity, each part of the brotherhood should support the other part. We are interlinked. That when someone gets something good, when someone gets something bad, we should rush to you know feel empathy for them. We should rush to congratulate the goodness. That is what believers are. And I want to finish, inshallah, with one of the most beautiful and my personal favorite example of a community coming together to support one of their own. So, to back, to give some idea of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, also in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 110, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kuntum khayran ummatin ukhrijat lin nasi ta'muroon, Kuntum khayran ummatin ukhrijat lin nasi ta'muroon bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna alil mun وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَلَوْ آمَنَ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَهُمْ مِنْهُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَأَكْثَرُهُمْ 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 الْفَاسِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ibran You are the best community ever raised for humanity You are the best community ever raised for humanity. You encourage good, you forbid evil, and you believe in Allah. He's telling us this. And he says, had the people of the book believed, it would have been better for them. Some of them are faithful and some of them are rebellious. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us, you are the best community. And a beautiful example of this, brothers and sisters, is in the marriage of Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu and Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu and Ali radiallahu anhu. When they were getting married, Ali radiallahu anhu, he didn't have a lot of possessions. It's actually in some narrations, he only literally just had his shield. That was his only possession. But there's others that he had a few more possessions. So the, the Prophet sallallahu he asks, you know, what are you going to give in mahr? And Ali, Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu, he says that I don't have anything. So the Prophet ﷺ instructs him that to sell your shield. So Ali radiallahu anh, he goes into the marketplace and he's selling his shield. And it's the only thing he owns and he's selling it. So Uthman radiallahu anh, he saw me in the marketplace selling my shield. And Uthman radiallahu anh is going to be his brother-in-law in a little bit because he had married uh, He's married to Ruqayya and then Umm Kulthum. So Uthman radiallahu was going to be his brother-in-law. So Uthman comes to Ali and he asks him, 
you know, how much is it worth? I'll, I'll buy it off you. And Ali radiallahu anhu, he told the Prophet sallallahu that it's only worth about like four dirhams. It's not worth that much. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, he says, I will give you 400 for it. 400 dirhams for it. So Ali, Ali, Ali radiallahu anhu, he says, sure, this is great. And he recognizes that Uthman is being charitable to him, but he's, he's valuing it. So Uthman radiallahu anhu, is a rich man. And see, so he says, I'll give you 400 for it. And then he says, I gave him 400. And then I, ha I handed him back his shield. And I said, this is my wedding gift to you. Subhanallah. So he got his 400 dirhams and he goes back to the Prophet وسلم, and he tells him what happens. And the Prophet وسلم, he makes dua for Uthman. And continuing on, Ali he asks, he, he, he sold a few other things that he had and he got about a sum of about 480 dirhams. So he asks the Prophet وسلم, he says, what should I do now? I have the mahr, it's 480 dirhams. And so what do I do with it? And the Prophet وسلم, said, use two thirds of it to buy her some perfume and use one third of it to buy some furniture for your home. So now Ali is in a conundrum. He doesn't know where to buy perfume from. So look at how the community comes together. Bilal comes and they go out shopping for perfume. Ali radiallahu anhu has never bought perfume in his life, so Bilal radiallahu anhu takes him and he helps him buy some perfume for his wife, Fatima radiallahu anhu. And so, look how the, the heavy hitters of the community start to come in. So he says, I gave the rest of the money to Umm Salama radiallahu anha. And in the excitement of the community, he asked Umm Salama, to use whatever what was left to buy what was necessary for the bride for her preparation. So the Prophet ﷺ, he gives some money to Abu Bakr, he gives some money to a few other people, and he gives some money to Abu Bakr to buy some clothes for them. And then he sent Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu and he said, make some preparations for the wedding. So look how the whole community, they begin to come together. You know, Bilal radiallahu helps him buy some perfume. Um Salama and Aisha radiallahu anha, they begin to put the house together for them. They begin to get the furniture and make the house clean for them. Ammar ibn Yasir, he starts to go out and start preparing for the wedding. And Abu Bakr goes out and starts buying clothes. Think about this. It's just someone's wedding. But look how the entire community is coming together just for these two. The entire community is ready to go and support them, to go and give them glad tidings, to go and put their own efforts to make sure that this blessing of marriage is good for them. So look how they step in as a community to support one another, to help in facilitating this marriage. They set, as a community, they set an example for all of us brothers and sisters, that when someone receives something good, immediately rush to enjoin them in that, immediately rush to congratulate them in that. Immediately rush to make sure that they feel like it's a blessing from Allah. And when someone needs your help as a community, as a community, we should come together and we should all work and all help whoever needs the help. May Allah might make us like the Sahaba and reunite us with them. May Allah detach us from our wealth and not let it overtake our lives. May Allah make us of the humble and the most patient and the most grateful. May Allah make us of those who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah with our hearts. May Allah make us of those from the straight path. May Allah make it easy for us to pass Sirat al Mustaqim. May Allah help us recognize what true happiness really is and help us reach it through faith in Him. May Allah give us the strength to pass away from or to pass His tests and to stay away from His punishment. May Allah keep our faith strong and never let it waver. Allahumma inna ka'afuwan tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Allahumma inna ka'afuwan tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Allahumma inna ka'afuwan tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Allahumma kfini bi halalika an haramik wa abdini bi fadlika amman siwaak. Allahumma kfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'a minhum wal amwat. Inna ka sami'an qariban mujibu da'wat. Ya Rabbul Alameen. Anything good that I said, is from the bounty and grace of Allah, and anything that was bad or wrong is from my own misdeeds and the influence of Shaytan. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة